Welcome to lecture four. We're going to talk about resonance structures some a little more, and we'll define major and minor contributors so we can rank that, the resonance structures. And we are also working class activity Pogel uh, 2. So in your book, and that's where we'll start. So Pogel activity 2 is page 17 in your book. Okay, so let's look at model 1. And this is what we'd be doing in our face-to-face -face class. Um, so if you turn the page to model 1, you'll see is here and then we'll or we'll um, answer the questions together as if we're in class all right so model one is called resonance structures for a carbonyl group we talked about what a carbonyl group is here's one and here's two Okay, now, question number one. Count the electrons in each bond and each lone pair to determine how many total electrons in structure one. So total electrons in structure one. Okay, so you gotta consider you have three onto this because of the hydrogens. So if you had to, you could write each one of these out okay so you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four so twenty four electrons and what about structure two Okay, so in structure two, we'll also draw these out. Now remember, when you're dealing with organic chemistry, how you draw out your Lewis structure will help you in your problem solving. So keep in mind, organic chemistry is a science, okay, a science class, so there are problem solving. So if you have to redraw them, then you redraw them. So they want total number of valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So 24 valence electrons. Is the total of a no number of electrons in each structure the same? Yes. All right, how many sigma bonds, single bonds? So single or sigma bonds. Are there in structure one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine sigma bonds. Okay, how many sigma bond electrons are in structure one? Well, there's two electrons, so it's 18 sigma electrons. Okay, what about structure two? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 9 times 2 electrons in each bond is 18 electrons for their sigma bonds. Is the total number of sigma bond electrons the same in each structure? Yes. How many lone pair electrons are found in structure 1? So lone pair. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 lone pair electrons. This is question 1C. There's four. How many in structure two for 1C? Um, lone pair electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six electrons. Um, is the number of lone pair electrons the same in each structure? No. Okay, four and six are different. How many pi bonds, double bonds, how many pi bond electrons? 
Okay, pi bond electrons, we have two. How many pi bond electrons? We have zero. Okay, is the number of pi bond electrons the same in each structure? No. Okay, based on these answers, describe what is different between structure one and two in terms of electrons. What would you say? Structure one has two electrons in pi bond, whereas structure two has all um, it's not it, all it's um, you can um, has all its uh, I just put all its electrons in the um, non-bonding pairs. I don't really say all you can say resonance electrons. Those are the ones that can participate. So is the total, and this is question number two, is the total net charge in structure one the same as the total net charge in structure two? Um, let me draw this structure correctly. Okay, the net charge is the same. And the net charge is very important. As you uh, learned from that last lecture, that you need to have conservation of charge. So here's a resonance arrow. Okay, and you have to have conservation of charge. So this is overall neutral, and a minus plus a positive is also neutral. Okay, so yes, net charge is the same. As a group, discuss what the curved arrows in one mean. So the curved arrows go here. Okay, so what does that mean? This is the... Question three, I wrote the movement of electrons from a pi bond to the non-bonding orbital. Okay, so those electrons went from the pi bond to a non-bonding orbital. Okay, so we have a couple more models. So now we're going on to model number two. So go ahead and start looking at model number two. And you can start answering those questions quietly to yourself. Because that's what we'd be doing in class right now. Okay, this is called resonance structures of acrylic 
acid. Okay, so number four, question four. Under the resin structures of the acrylic acid shown in model two, is the total charge of each resin structure the same? So overall, you see in three, it's neutral. Four, the plus and the minus is neutral. Number five, the plus and the minus is neutral. And number six, plus and minus is neutral. So yes. Okay, 1B, I mean 4B. Is the total number of electrons for each resonance the same? Okay, so let's count them. So remember, we got to count the sigma bonds too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 bonds, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 lone pairs. So that's 20 electrons, that's 28 electrons. What about number four? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine bonds, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lone pair, lone pair electrons. So that's 18 plus 10 is 28. Okay, we do the same for five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine bonds. Lone pairs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the same, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 bonds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 lone pairs. Okay, so the answer is yes. Total number of electrons are the same. Or C. Have any single bonds been broken? No. Are any atoms bonded to different atoms other than the resonance forms? CH2, CH, CO, OH. CH2, CH, CO, OH. No. No single bonds have been broken. 4E. Do all the atoms have eight electrons or less? Eight electrons or less. And the answer is yes. Okay. Um, whenever you have a carbocation, that has six electrons. Um, an oxygen minus has eight electrons. Okay, so those are your formal charges in these structures. But they all have eight or less electrons. And these are important because these tell us that these are valid resonance structures. And these are sometimes the questions you should ask yourself when you're drawing your resonance structures. Okay, question number five. Curved arrows are used to show the movement of electron pairs. That's what we said before. Consider the curved arrows depicted on structures in model two. What does the curved arrow on structure three imply and be specific? Okay, so that one there. The movement of pi electrons to a uh, non-bonding um, orbital on oxygen. Okay, movement of pi electrons from the carbon to a non-bonding orbital on the oxygen. Okay, that's 5a. 5b, what does the curved arrow on structure four? So here we have the curved arrow on structure four. We go from a pi, the movement, okay, so it's the movement of the pi electrons from carbon, carbon, to a new pi bond between carbon and carbon. Okay, so you see how those electrons went from there to there, from three to four, and here they are here. And now these electrons here are going to there, the compound five. And then, 5C, 
what do the curved arrows mean in 5? Okay, so here we have the electrons from the movement of the pi electrons from the carbon-carbon double bond toward the, um, toward the carbocation. That's what a carbon positive is called, a carbocation. Um, that is an sp2. You, if you look at that, that's carbon bonded to three things. So it's an sp2 carbon, and um, it will form a new pi bond between the carbon-carbon bond. So electrons are negative. They will be attracted, literally pulled, to that carbocation. It has an unhybridized p orbital because it's a carbocation, and that forms the new pi bond. And six. Okay, and converting structures five to six is necessary to move two pairs of electrons. Oh, okay, we also have this one. So I guess if you were going to answer this thoroughly, you would also say uh, non bonding um, electrons on oxygen form a new pi bond onto the carbon. So these electrons on oxygen also moves that carbon to form a pi bond here. And that gives that a positive charge. Um, OK, so they're showing you in D what would happen if, um, we'll just talk about it, if you did not move two. So you see how you have this first electron flow arrow to move the non-bonding pair of electrons to the carbon, and then you had to have a second one to move the pi to the other carbon. And the problem is, if you didn't, you would get something that looked like this. Okay. So if you did not, and this is a mistake some people make, okay, you would get a structure that looked like this. And you can put this in your your notes on that question. Okay, so if you only moved this one arrow here, then you see this carbon, that's a problem. That carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten electrons. That is an octet violation that is not allowed. Okay, and that's why I asked if in 4E if there was eight electrons or less. So you do have to keep moving those electrons so you do not have an octet violation. Um, the question on the next page, which would be 6a, okay, so 6a question is talking about in structure 3 of model 2, the double bond electrons move to form a lone pair on the oxygen. So we see that right here. Okay. The arrow below shows the double bond electrons moving from a lone pair. Okay, so I will draw this one out. Let me get that off there. Okay. So they're showing you structure three. And what you're wanting to learn here is how to draw these electron flow arrows to really understand what it is meant. Okay, so they're showing you this electron flow movement. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that would, if you draw that resulting structure, you would have to draw Um, either something that looks like this, okay, or you could put those electrons on there like that.
No. This would give that carbon a formal charge of negative, right? Because carbon is group 4 minus 3 minus 2. It dashes in the dot, so that's uh, negative 1. And what would that oxygen be? The oxygen here would be group 6 minus 4 dots minus one bond, that's a negative one, okay? So you see right there, you have an overall negative two. Here, this oxygen's fine, it's got, or carbon's fine, it's got four bonds, but this oxygen here would be a negative one, and then this oxygen here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, valence, uh, ten electrons. That's an octet violation. Okay, so that would be wrong, and a minus 2 is wrong because it has to be neutral. So that's what's wrong with those. Um, 6b, although this form is possible, they're saying this one's possible, it is possible, why is it not likely? Um, and one of the reasons why oxygen is more electronegative. Okay, then carbon. So anytime you have a carbon oxygen bond, the electronegativity is to the oxygen. So you're going to get your negative, the neg and this is an important rule, the negative charge will reside on the more electronegative atom. So that is one of the rules that we're going to talk about that's also on um, page 52 in your book. Okay, there's um, going to be four rules regarding um, drawing resonance structures that we're trying to build up to through this um, Pogel exercise. Okay, so now we're on question number seven. Follow the resonance structure guidelines developed in question number four. For each pair below, determine whether the resonance structure on the right is acceptable resonance structure. Put an X through any incorrect structures on the right of each pair. You indicate which items listed on question number four were not followed, and then you draw the correct resonance form. Okay, so let's do question number seven. So these are your provided resonance structures. All right, and here was this, the one provided for you. Okay, so what's the problem here? Um, carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten electrons. Okay, this is an octet violation. Let's go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you, this is so awkward for me. Okay, I've never seen an arrow like this. This is saying hydrogen takes the two electrons in the sigma bond and leaves. So it would leave like this, which is a called a hydride, and that would leave a positive out in the open air and um, but you could also look like the overall charge is not conserved okay and a single a single or a sigma bond is broken okay these are two things that cannot happen when you're drawing resonance structures all right 
So by the way, you need to X out those on your your paper. Okay, so now we're on the last one. All right, let's look at this one. So we're saying these uh, electrons here in the pi bond go to form a new pi bond. Okay, so the does everything, the octet's okay? Okay, the octet's okay, so those are good. This is overall a negative, minus one charge. This is a neutral. So the problem with this is, um, oh, and also, oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So oxygen violates the octet rule. Okay, so that is um, not allowed. Okay, that's an octet violation. And overall, the charge is not conserved, which is another way to, to indicate that there's a problem in your resonance structures. Um, one of the other things you were supposed to draw, the appropriate one. So the appropriate one would be this. So if you erase this here, and those electrons go there. So electrons really want to go toward the more electronegative atom. So this would be a correct resonance charge for that one. This one here, um, erase this. You could do something like that, and that would give you So you're moving the electrons from a pi bond, pi bond to a non-bonding pair. We can do that. And you see the overall charge is okay. And on this last one, um, you can move the electrons from oxygen to carbon and what would that look like? Draw your sigma bonds the same place. And so that's still conservation of the charge. And, um, but that's going to be, we're going to learn that that is a minor contributor. You got to say minor, this would be a major. And one of the rules is you want the um, any negative charge you want it on the electronegative atom so if you can put your negative charge you got a choice between putting it on oxygen or putting it on carbon you want it on the more electronegative atom okay um, so remember there's four rules so that's one rule that's rule number four another rule here is um, Rule number one, and we're going to slowly introduce this, is you want as many octets as possible. Okay? So this would be a minor contributor because the carbon here doesn't have a complete octet. It has six electrons. Now, each atom is allowed to have eight or less electrons to make it a valid resonance structure. But it's a minor contributor. This is a major contributor because every atom here has a complete octet. So this would then be the major contributor. That's um, rule number one. And here, same thing. This carbon with a positive charge has um, an incomplete octet. And that's rule number one. Um, and this would be your major. A lot of times you can see that when I have a no formal charge, and this one you have a formal charge. And I think that's what Model 3 is going to talk about with the rules. Okay, so that was a small introduction of those rules. Okay, so let's look at Model 3. As I draw these out, you can um, go ahead and start working that page. So this is the Model 3, 
it's on page 20 and this is called the stability of the resonance forms and not all resonance forms have the same energy okay some are more stable than others and that's what we're going to learn here okay so you have the major contributors and where one is the most important so we're going to list these from most important and you want these in your notes i would actually get another sheet of paper and and the least important i said there's four rules if you read in your book you can get them down to four they're saying five rules here usually some rules rules can be separated or moved into one rule number one a complete octet okay we talked about that being the number one rule okay number two as many bonds as possible Okay, you'll find that that usually works out to a complete octet usually takes care of that. Um, number three, no charge on individual atoms. No charge on individual atoms. So if you can get the bonding patterns, that's going to be your major contributor. Okay, so neutral atom. Number four, if there is a charge. So if a charge must exist, then you want um, the charge to reside on the more electronegative atom. Okay, that's including positive charges too. Okay, that's um, positive charge. Or I mean, so if it's a negative, you want it on you know oxygen, the more electronegative. If it's a positive charge, then you'll want it on carbon, the less electropositive, electronegative atom. Okay? And then if a charge exists, so if you do have charges, you want um, small charge separation as possible between charged atoms. Okay, so those are the rules, and we're going to apply them in questions nine, 8 and 9. So let's draw out our resonance structures here. So we have some kind of carboxylic acid here. What does R mean? You know, I was in graduate school, I think, before I knew what R meant. R is any kind of carbons. Okay, so it can be five carbons, it can be one carbon. So R can be any kind of carbon. Okay, so here is number seven. And then we're going to do the resonance structure here. And okay. That's eight, and then we're going to draw the resonance structure for nine. All right, now question number eight A. For the resonance forms in model three, circle any atom in model three that do not have complete octets. So they do not have a complete octet. Circle that atom. And I will highlight it. Okay, so carbon has four, oxygen has two bonds. And so here we have this. You see the positive charge. So they're carbon. So carbon has an incomplete octet number eight. Okay, indicate the total number of bonds for each structure and model. So let's do 8B, the number of bonds. So we have 
one, two, three, four, five bonds. One, two, three, four, five bonds. Here we have one, two, three, four bonds. Here we have one, two, three, four bonds. Okay, so rule number one is incomplete octet. So the minor, because of rule number one, would be eight. Okay, and now we have rule number two, as many bonds as possible. So we're comparing seven and nine. Seven has five bonds and nine has four bonds. So as many bonds as possible. So this would be the second. So this is the most stable. And it also has no charge on any of the individual atoms. Okay, and this would be second, stable. And this would be the minor contributor. Okay, so which structure has no charge on any of the individual atoms? Number seven. If charge exists, which atom is most likely to hold the negative charge? Carbon, hydrogen, or oxygen? G circle oxygen because it's more electronegative. So, 8E. Based on the rules in Model 3, which structure would be the major contributor? So number seven is your major contributor. Explain. Number seven is your major contributor because every atom has a complete octet. It has four bonds. There are five bonds. And it has no charge on any of the atoms. Add curved arrows to show conversion from seven to eight. Okay, so if you want to go from 7 to 8, the electrons went from a pi bond, so they went from a pi bond to the non-bonding on oxygen. So we draw those arrows in. This is important because you need to be able to do this. Okay, so what about going from 8 to 9? The electrons went from the non-bonding pair on oxygen to a pi bond between carbon and oxygen. So the electrons went there. And that's your new pi bond. Okay, so that's number nine. And then question number 10. Okay. So number 10. Uh, for the following structure, use curved arrows to draw three additional resonance structures and predict which form, if any, would be the major contributor. Hint, move double bond to lone pair electrons and try moving one pair at a time. Okay, so let's draw our Lewis structure. All right, so here we go. Now we want to draw resonance structures. And when we're doing this, we need to look and we see that this carbon is sp2, this carbon is sp2, this carbon is sp2, this carbon is sp2, and the oxygen is an sp2 because it has lone pairs that are next door to an atom that's an sp2. So that means each one of these atoms have an unhybridized p orbital in which it can hold electrons and those electrons can flow. And that's important because let's say that this carbon here, the yellow carbon, was an sp3. If that was an sp3, then you would never put electrons on that carbon. Okay, so now when we do this flow, um, these electrons go here. I always find the charge. So when I'm drawing these, I always find my charge. And that's where I start. So a negative charge is going to push the electrons away. Okay. And then um, I would like to just stop there. But if I just stop there, that means that this carbon, the red carbon, will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons. 
Okay, that's not okay. That's an octet violation. So now I have to make sure that these electrons go on to carbon. Okay, and then um, those electrons have to go on that carbon, and those electrons go on that carbon. Okay, now that's a lot of drawing, but we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to draw all my sigma bonds in. So these electrons here went to here, and then those red electrons here went to here, and then those, let's say, blue electrons um, went to there. I get all my carbons in, carbon, and the blue, and the green. Okay, so those carbons go there. One, those went to there. Oh, sorry, do you see what I did? It wasn't working out right. This should be a single bond. Okay, so Yes, so these electrons here those electrons go here and then those electrons go there. So now the, the green electrons go here and then these red electrons have to go here and then these green electrons will go on top of carbon. And then you could do the formal charge for carbon here, and you can see that it's group number four minus the dots minus the dashes, and you get a minus one. Do you see how that's conservation of charge? Now, the other way you could do this is you could put the electrons here to make a pi bond, and then those electrons could reside on a carbon. And that's if you want to get more resonance structures. So just draw these three will be perfectly fine. And so if I draw what that looks like, this is that structure. Now, we need to mm, decide which one's your major and why. I think that's the question. Um, and I've also wanted three additional. Um, oh, another one you could do is, because I wanted three, you could put just the electrons here and redraw that. We'll give Pogel what Pogel wants. And that's a positive. And you see how that's okay because everything, every atom has eight electrons or less. And this is overall negative. This is overall negative because you got two negatives and one positive. So those are correct Lewis structures, resonance structures. All right, now let's rank them. So your major is going to have complete octet. Well, do you see any that does not have a complete octet? This is an incomplete. Okay, this one has an incomplete octet. So the end, you have um, more charge. You have lots of charges. So this is going to be your least contributor, the last one we drew. Okay, so if you look at all the other structures, you see that they all have a complete octet. You don't see a positive carbon. Okay, so everything has eight electrons. As many bonds as possible. Well, let's count bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven bonds. Okay, go to the next one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bonds. Go to the next one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bonds. Okay, so the, that's fine. No charge on individual atoms. Well, here we do. We have the negative here on the oxygen. 
and we have the negative here on the carbon and here we have the negative on the carbon okay so we have a charge um, sometimes these are kind of together here um, if you do have a charge you want the negative to be like on the oxygen so here we have the negative on the oxygen so this is going to be your major contributor because the negative is on the electronegative oxygen here you have a negative on the carbon here you have a negative on the carbon these are going to be equal they're going to be your minor ones and it's because you have the electronegative negative on the carbon rather than the oxygen okay so now it is your turn to do the additional problems on page 21 and 22 in your book okay um, you can not do number 12 so you can omit problem number 12 if you would like so I'm just looking at problem number 11 for your turning in your problems and you can read more about resonance structures in your um, book but I think that covers the rules and being able to assign major and minor contributors.